Now, this is in 1963, and the three men who were instrumental in using Houston's space politics to advance racial politics were Quentin Meese, who was a leader in the black community, and he was the executive director of the Bagby Street YMCA. And he would let student protesters from Texas Southern University use the Y as a headquarters during their events. Another was Eldrewy Stearns. He was a political activist and a student organizer. And he was the first president and a co-founder of the TSU Progressive Youth Association. And he also helped organize the 1960 lunch counter sit-ins in Houston. And with him was Otis King, a law student at TSU at the time. He also helped with the 1960 sit-ins and co-founded the PYA with Stearns. They started planning something in May 3rd of 1963 when police officers in Birmingham, Alabama used dogs and fire hoses on protesters and arrested 2,500 people. Angered by these events, Stearns and King began to plan what is arguably the most successful civil rights protest to never happen. May 15th, Gordon Cooper, the astronaut, leaves Earth for a 34 and a half hour space flight, and that's the longest up to that time ever taken by an American. Houston, the home of the astronauts, planned a ticker tape parade through the downtown for Cooper on May 23rd. So the plan from Otis King and Eldrewy Stearns, have protesters infiltrate, infiltrate the crowd along the parade route. And on the appointed time and signal, they pull signs out from underneath their clothes, run into the street, stop the parade, and bring national media attention to their cause because all of the networks were going to be there covering this parade live. And on the day of the parade, the PYA protesters took their places. They hid homemade signs under their shirts and jackets. They went along the parade route, and they kept an eye out for the nearest payphone to call headquarters, because that's the only way they could do it. We had an audience this morning where nobody really knew what payphones were. <laughs> uh, and so runners would go from these phones and call and receive calls from headquarters, and then they would go up to the people on the side of the parade route and whisper instructions. Meanwhile, King and Stearns and the other PYA leaders went to their headquarters at the Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church, which had been recently opened by the Reverend Bill Lawson, a TSU Bible professor. And the parade is set to begin at 11 a.m. And by 10.30, the staging area is set, children are holding American flags, they're lining the parade route with their parents. People are in buildings ready to shower down paper and ticker tape, and the negotiations still went on. Then at 1040, 20 minutes before the protesters reach their failsafe, Meese calls the church. The PYA had won. The parade went on without protest, and 30 days later, without press coverage or fanfare, downtown restaurants and movie theaters desegregated. Two years later, in April of 1965, black leaders, with the help of high school students, students from Texas Southern University and the University of Houston, organized 2,000 blacks for a protest march against gradual desegregation. They turned Houston's space age symbolism against the city with signs that read, Space Age Houston, Stone Age Schools. 